Good evening and welcome to Allen's Italy. Uh, tonight's show, which is show number 98, we're rapidly approaching 100, is going to be the first of many shows that uh, we brought back from the most recent trip we took to Italy in May and June. Uh, and this uh, tonight's show is going to focus on one of the really extraordinary towns in Italy, the town of Varenna on Lake Como. And uh, I will tell you that story in just a moment. Let me go to the album. Da -da. To there. I would give anything if this process could be streamlined. That's the way it is. So there it is, uh, show number 98, Varenna on Lake Como. There's a picture right there of the town of Varenna. I'll get to that in just a moment. But it behooves me to mention something that happened to me today. What happened was that uh, uh, my indicator light on my car was indicating I had a problem. So I went in to um, my local mechanic, which is uh, Don's Auto on, on Zena Road, Don's Auto of Zena, who's a kind of a neighbor of mine. He's only about a quarter of a mile down the road. He immediately took me, even though we had other people waiting, took care of the problem, didn't charge me, and, um, you know, they're, they're just so wonderful there, um, Cindy and Dawn, who run the place, and James, who is one of the, who is a mechanic there, that I just told them that, uh, based on the wonderful kindness that they exhibited to me today, I would mention that, um, that I, you know, thank you very, very much. So to Cindy and Dawn and James, thank you, you wonderful people, and, uh, you run a really, really great business. Okay, so Lake Como. Um, Lake Como has played a very, very important part of my life of Italian travel over the uh, these many years. And um, this graphic illustrates all the trips to Lake Como that uh, Laura and I have taken over the years. And you can see that the first time we went 
was in 2007 when Laura and I drove to Varena um, on Lake Como by car. And uh, we had heard of Lake Como, wanted to go, and finally decided to go. You know, when you go to uh, uh, Lake Como or any of the lakes, you know, you have to kind of decide upon a town. There's a lot of towns around the lake where you could stay, and we decided that we were going to stay in Varena because we heard such wonderful things about it. So we had a really wonderful trip. And then a year later, in 2008, we were taking a trip with our very close friends, Linda and Bruce, and we decided to go back to Lake Como. And this time we stayed in Bellagio because we felt that with the four of us, if there was any kind of a rain event and we couldn't really you know, travel around the lake, that we would need a larger town to perhaps have more to do within the town. So we stayed in Bellagio, and we arrived by car again. In 2009, Laura and I returned to Varena, uh, again by car, um, and that was a, a, a really unusual episode because as I was pulling up to a parking spot uh, on the side of the road, on the entrance to Varena, I'll show you the spot later, um, there was a, a fellow walking his dog, and as I'm parking the car, and I came, I didn't do a parallel park, I actually came in forwards. And as I'm riding along with my tire just barely scraping the sidewalk, I could hear this horrible grinding sound, and the fellow walking his dog threw his hands up to his head and said, Oh, mamma mia, the, the, there was a nail sticking out of the sidewalk, which actually sliced my, my tire in half. So that was a horrible experience. Um, we returned in 2010 with Randy and David, and again we stayed in Varena. Uh, this time we traveled there by train. And then, of course, in 2014, uh, the trip we just took, Laura and I arrived in Varena and arrived again by train. The two times we arrived by train, we were picked up at the train stop train station by uh, Marco Barili, who runs a, um, a taxi service for that area of Italy, who's a wonderful guy. So the first thing I would do is do a little bit of a retrospective, going back and talking about some of the really great experiences that um, we've had on Lake Como. So first, you know, again, a picture of it as I tell you a little bit about the town. The town... Uh, appears in the in records for the first time during the 15th during the 5th century so in the year 493 it appears in in records but did not actually become a town until the 8th century AD when it was founded by fishermen uh, Varena has always been a, a a fishing village and you'll see that as we get closer to the actual town you can see many of the boats that are there and there's still a lot of fishing that goes on. It was involved in some kind of a, um, a war with Milan in the 12th century and was destroyed along with um, uh, a rival of theirs on the, uh, on the lake, the town of Como, which was on the Milan side. And um, there really isn't very, very much that I found on the internet related to the history of Varenna, which kind of adds to the charm. Varenna is a quiet and very peaceful place where there's not much going on. If you want to go to a place and not go to any churches or museums and seeing the great art, but you just want to kind of revel in the magnificence of a quiet, peaceful uh, town on Lake Como with great restaurants and great bars and great uh, you know, sightseeing within the town, walk, just walking around the streets and just sitting with a Prosecco or Lemoncello uh, lakeside. This is the place to go. And that's you know, the fact that it, there isn't much history makes for the charm of the town. But first, um, one of my favorite photos of uh, Lake Como is this picture, which is taken from uh, the town of Varenna, looking out at the lake. And you could, you could see that this is a really charming sight. 
This is another one of my very fav favorite um, photos. And it's not taken, it's actually looking towards Varena on the other side of the lake. But the town you see there in the foreground is the town of Bellagio, taken from a ferry boat that is either do about to dock or you know has already um, um, gone off from the dock and is headed across the lake to Varena. There's the Alps in the background. This picture was taken in April, so you can see that there is still plenty of snow in the Alps at that time. But this is really one of my favorite photos. This is another one of my favorite photos. This is taken from the hotel that we've stayed in three times on um, Lake Como in the town of Varena, the Hotel Villa Ciprezi. And we had this wonderful window overlooking this incredible view. And on the left there, you see the Villa Monastero, which I'll show you, you know, more close up later. And the town in the distance is the town of Fiumelata. And this is a really nice... Uh, photo. This is another photograph taken from the opposite angle. So we're actually now standing in the uh, Villa Monastero, in the gardens of the, of the villa, looking right directly at the Hotel Villa Ciprezi. So you see that there's a column in the foreground, and you can see that there's a kind of a yellow building right next to it, right almost right in the dead center of the photograph. That's what the uh, hotel looks like. It's actually a 16th century villa that was made into a hotel. And you can see that that's a really magnificent uh, place to stay. And then we, stay, we had the privilege of staying there three times. This is a view from that hotel looking out at the lake, looking towards the west. And that little, uh, uh, it looks, sort of looks like an island, but it's not. On the other side of that rise, um, that hill, is uh, the town of Bellagio. And this is um, the actual hotel, Villa Ciprezi. And you know, this is, a, this is, the, this is what it looks like um, from a distance. This is the view you get from one of the rooms. And when you go into the actual gardens of the hotel, this is what you see. And this is one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite hotels in all of Italy and a favorite of a lot of people, especially people who are planning weddings. And this is a very, very um, popular venue for people who want to have their wedding in a beautiful location in Italy. And for that reason, the hotel is sometimes closed to tourists because it is catering to um, people having weddings. And this is what it looks like you know, to have a wedding. You have your wedding in a magnificent location like this. People not only from, from Italy, but from uh, the United States as well. And we've met some of them over the years. This is another view from the hotel looking out at the lake with the beautiful grounds around it. And uh, at, at the time that we were staying in this hotel, we were so enamored of the hotel that I decided to take a picture of the arrangement of the rooms on the third floor so that when we returned, we would be able to choose the best room. We've actually stayed in uh, most of the rooms on this floor. We've stayed in the one where the red dot is. That's where we were staying at the time. And we've stayed in this room. And this room is actually a suite that they gave us because there was some kind of a mix-up in the reservation, so they gave us this suite, which is really, really beautiful. And this is a picture. Now, you know, now we're in the town, so um, this is the first trip we took to, um, to Varena, and we're sitting at a table at the Barrio Molo with the, um, you know, sipping uh, a glass of wine with the background of Lake Como, uh, right behind us, and you could see how absolutely beautiful that is. We weren't sitting in this pose for the, for our little, um, uh, the, the couple of drinks we were having. We were actually on the opposite side, so we were actually facing the lake, which is obviously more preferable. This is the trip we took in 2008 when we were with Linda and Bruce, and we're right now on a ferry boat going someplace, I'm not exactly sure, 
but that was the 2008 trip. During the 2000, um, oh, during that same trip in 2008, we took a side trip to Switzerland, and we encountered a snowstorm, which uh, kind of freaked me out, and we turned around and came home. But this is uh, the view of uh, the direction we were going, which was St. Moritz, which is up there in the mountains. And when we saw the snow that was obviously coming in from the north, we decided to turn around and come, come back. This is the trip we took in 2009. And since in 2009, we had decided not to visit Florence, that Luca and Mary decided to come up to Lake Como and visit us. So they took a seven-hour trip from their home in Foligna Valdarno in Tuscany up to visit us on Lake Como. And one of the highlights of that trip was this video. So, Alan, get ready. I don't know why I, the, the video is not being seen there, but I'm going to play it and see what comes up. Stop that. Go back. Go forward, and here it is. Voila! I don't know what happened. Luca and I are alternately whistling the theme from The Godfather. So now are you ready? Okay, here we go. But that was uh, kind of a, there's a, there's a feedback. That was kind of an interesting uh, occasion there. We were, we were, I think, on a bench in Bellagio about to go to Varenna, and we decided to do that Godfather duet. This is the trip in 2010 that we took with uh, Randy and David. This was taken in uh, mid, mid to late October, so it was pretty, pretty cold. At that time, you could see that we're all kind of bundled up there, sitting lakeside. But you could, you know, you could see that it's still very, very beautiful. Okay, so here is here is where Lake Como is located. First of all, Lake Como is, you know, here's Rome, here's Florence, and right up here, it, you know, you could see the Swiss border right over here. And this is where Lake Como is located, right where my pointer is, right over here and very, very close to uh, Switzerland. You could actually be in Switzerland within about a half hour if you take the ferry boat across. I'll show you on this map. This is a better map. And let me make it larger so you could actually get a better view of that. Here's, Ver here's Lake Como. It kind of looks like a person. You know, with, and here are the legs. Here's Verena, here's Bellagio. If you took the ferry boat across the lake here to Menaggio, and then continued on the road going in this direction, you would eventually come to Switzerland and eventually to Lugano, Switzerland. So this is a really wonderful location with a lot of really wonderful towns around here. There's a town here, Chernobyl, which has some really wonderful things which we intend to get to eventually. Um, George Clooney has a house right over here, right north of Chernobyl. Um, and here's the town of Bellagio and Leno and some of the other towns. But we like Verena because it's in a really beautiful central location. If you're approaching Verena from the north, this is the road you would take to get to it. It's a very pretty road, and it leads right into the, um, where the dock is located. It doesn't lead you into the center of town, which is where the church is located. It really leads you to the dock. And if you come in from the south, uh, this is the road you would take. This is the road where I actually pulled up along the side of the, uh, that sidewalk on the left there and had my tires slashed by the sidewalk. But this is how it, it, it appears. And most of the time that I've driven into Varenna and entered the town, I've entered from this vantage point. So this is coming... Um, 
from the south. And this is the actual hotel over there on the left side. And um, entering the town. And this is the center of town. And there's that beautiful big tree in the middle there. There's that church over there on the left and the Alps in the background. This is what the town of Verena looks like in the main piazza, which is not a place where we spend that much time, as I'll indicate in a few minutes. This is, um, this is more where we hang out uh, by the dock, by the ferry boat dock. And this is the way we've arrived in Verena the last two times. This is the train station, uh, which is called Verena Esseno, and uh, we came in there, and then we were picked up at the train station by Marco Barili. There he is standing in front of one of his taxis. He's a wonderful man, and when you make an appointment with him to pick you up at a train station or to pick you up from your hotel, taking you to the airport, this guy is always on time. He's uh, a wonderful driver. Um, his van is very, very comfortable, and we love... Um, taking a trip with um, him to the various places that we go. This is Marco Barili. And he took us to this hotel, which is a, a hotel that we stayed in for the very first time. We usually stay, as I told you, to the uh, Villa Ciprese, but we decided to stay at the Hotel du Lac this time because I think they were booked up with a wedding. It's a gorgeous hotel. This is what it looks like uh, from the lakeside looking up at the room that we had. Actually, that room right over there, um, right here, is the room we had with a little balcony. So it was a really nice room. And uh, this is uh, probably the reason why most people stay at this hotel. They have a patio where people have their breakfast. Actually, I think they can have any meal of the day. I'm not sure if they actually have a dinner, but you could have lunch here, you could have breakfast here, you could have a mid-afternoon um, cocktail, and this is a really beautiful spot, obviously, to sit and relax. If you want to go to a place in Italy and spend a few days just relaxing, this is the spot right here. And this is what their patio looks like. There are quite a few people who were just kind of relaxing by the lake. Uh, this is actually the table we had. We had a little appetizer, which you can see right there in the middle, and my lemoncello on the, on the left, and Laura's Prosecco on the right, and that's the, um, you know, the view we had of Lake Como. And this is what the um, patio looks like from the other angle. And looking north, this is, uh, excuse me, looking south, this is looking north. But you could see it's a really beautiful spot to kind of, you know, hang out and take it easy. And there is a, a perfect example of that with me having breakfast. And I'm, uh, I'm actually sipping a cappuccino right there. And uh, this is early morning because we're about to, I think, leave the hotel to head to the airport. But this is like, you know, you don't want to leave. It's such a beautiful, beautiful spot. And, uh, you know, this is the indoor part of their uh, restaurant. Um, but obviously, in the beautiful weather that we were experiencing, there were very, very few people in the restaurant. <clears throat> they have beautiful lounges throughout the Hotel du Lac. This is one of them. And this is another. Obviously, these are like really nice places to, to uh, relax. There's a working fireplace over there, right in the center. And once again, a view of the hotel looking at our room over there on the right, and then looking in the opposite direction. This is the view we had from our hotel room, from right from the balcony. So this is like quite nice looking to the south. This is looking to the north. You could see why Lake Como is one of my favorite places in all of Italy, and Verena, high on that list. This is a view of the town of Verena, taken from um, the window of one of the rooms we had at the Villa Ciprese. 
Uh, at the very bottom of this photo is their terrace where they serve dinner overlooking the lake. And now we're walking towards the um, ferry dock. And this is some of the sights you see as you're walking through the town of Varenna. Laura, as you know, is a proponent of taking pictures of doors. This is what, Ver this is what Varenna is mostly. You know, if you want to get from the main level where, where you pull in with your car to the dock level, you have to go uh, up <clears throat> this very steep hill. And those steps over there in the front are called contrade. C-O-N-T-R-A-D-E. So those are the, that's what they call the steps. And throughout the town, this is what you have to you know, walk up in order to get from the dock to the main level. It's beautiful. I mean, you can see that this is a really beautiful narrow street. There's another example of that. But you have to be in pretty good shape because these are very steep, steep uh, hills. And to get, you know, from place to place, you have to uh, be able to, you know, manage this. But there are a lot of uh, flat streets, and these are some of them as we walk through the town of Arena. These are some of the sites that you would see. With the arches, you know, you're walking actually under um, some of the, um, of the buildings. And you can see that this is a really beautiful town. And, you know, you're just leisurely strolling around without uh, having to worry about making an appointment for a museum or um, a tour at a church. You know, you're just kind of relaxing after, you know, usually after you've been to many, many other places in Italy, like you've been to Venice and you've like really spent, you know, three or four or five days just kind of walking around seeing the art and it's, it's very difficult. And you come to a place like this to kind of really unwind and that's what I like it the best. Look at this. This is actually looking uh, down one of the um, contrade from the top looking down. And, you know, these can be a little bit treacherous, so you have to be careful on these steps. And there's another real pretty uh, street in the town of Varenna. Another one looking down towards the dock. You can see the lake in the distance between two buildings. I tried to um, edit some of these, but I just couldn't get rid of any of these photos. I find them all absolutely charming. Or you could walk along the actual uh, lake if you want. There's something called a pa de passarela, which is the uh, walkway that takes you from one part of the town to the dock. And there's David over there in front with me walking behind him. And this is what it's like walking along this uh, passarela um, to the dock. There's the ferry in the back in the uh, distance over there. And if you look out towards the lake, this is one of the things you see as you walk along there. So this is a very, very scenic route. There's another shot of it, this time looking uh, towards the south. And there are the boats. Everybody has a boat, I guess, who lives in the town. And you pass the bar Il Molo, which will play a very, very big role in not uh, tonight's show, but the show we're going to do in two weeks, which will actually... I'll talk about that a little later, but the Barrio Molo is one of our favorite hangouts when we're in Varenna. It's a really wonderful place, as you'll see uh, a little later and also at the next show. And, you know, you have ducks that come right up on the shore. So it's very, very charming and relaxing. And there are stores along the route to get to the ferry. There's one of them right there. And in the distance over there on the, um, I better use the pointer. This is another one of our favorite restaurants. This is the, uh, the restaurant Vecchia Varena. And we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about that more uh, a little later in, in tonight's show. But that's uh, 
probably our favorite restaurant in, in the entire town of Verena. And this is what that restaurant looks like at night. So you can see it's really beautiful and it gives you a beautiful view of the lake. These are more views of the lake, kind of as the sun was going down. And eventually you wind up at the dock where you see that that is the, uh, you know, when the ferry boat comes in, there's a sign there uh, which indicates that you have arrived at the town of Varena. And uh, there comes the ferry into the ferry dock with the Alps in the background. The ferry is in the dock. People are now boarding. This is what it looks like. And there are cars on there, so, you know, you're sharing the ferry with the cars. This is one of the really nice um, um, cafes right across from the dock. So if you get to a ferry, if you get to the ferry terminal a little early, you can stop off here for a little cappuccino. We've done that many times. And then while you're on the ferry, you can go to various places along the lake. For example, you can go to Bellano. Bellano is the town that is just north of Varena. This is what it looks like. It's kind of deserted because most people don't go there. It's a very, very nice town, as you could see, set into the mountains, but very, very few um, uh, tourists. Most of the tourists are in this town. This is the town of Bellagio again, and this is where most of the tourists go. You know, they go to Bellagio, which is a real you know, tourist town, and it's, you know, there's a lot going on, a lot of stores, a lot of restaurants, a lot of hotels. This is the town of Menaggio, which is uh, really directly opposite and to the west of Varena across the lake, and there's me sitting on a bench. And this is a very lively town as well. You could visit some of the famous villas, Along the lake, you can go to the Villa Serbelloni, which is located in the town of Bellagio. You could go to the Villa Carlotta, which is located just between the two towns of Tremezzo and Cadenabia on Lake Como. This is a beautiful villa with uh, beautiful gardens. You could go to our favorite villa, Villa Balbianello, and there's a, a view of it which is really, really nice. And you can get a tour of the actual house, which is something that a lot of the villas don't give you. This is the Villa Ciprese, which of course is where the hotel that we've stayed in many times is located. It's not only a hotel, but it's also these beautiful gardens that you see there. This is one of the villas we have not been to, but we intend to go to on our next visit. This is the Villa d'Este in Chernobyl. This is supposed to be one of the most beautiful villas as well, which is also, I think, an active hotel at the time, at this time. This is one of the places we've also never gone. This is just above the um, town of Verena in the little, tiny little town of Perledo. It's called the Castello di Vezio. And this is a castle that you can get to by climbing a very narrow and steep series of steps and people on the internet indicate that it's a very difficult trip so we've never taken it but you can see that from the very top um, you get this beautiful castle which is mostly deserted and they have exhibitions up there as well art exhibitions but this is the reason most people go there for this let me make that bigger this is the view you get from the top of the castle. Look at that. That is Lake Como at its best. And you can see Bellagio over there on the left and some of the other towns going south on Lake Como. That's a beautiful view of it. So I'm not sure if we'll climb up there because it seems a little treacherous, but if we ever wanted to, this is the view we'd get. And this is the bar Il Molo. You know, you, you have a whole day of sightseeing and um, you're ready for some festivities. So this is one of our favorites. This is the bar Il Molo. This is me standing in front of the um, 
you know, it's not a bar so much as it is a restaurant, um, and it's an outdoor restaurant for the most part, and you could see that it has pizza, but it also has a lot of other very, very wonderful things to eat. And uh, of course, you know, in the opposite direction, you would have a view of Lake Como, which is really, really spectacular. <clears throat> this is uh, the trip we just took in 2014. That's me over there on the left side, sitting at one of the tables, looking out at the lake. So you can see that this is a really, really lovely um, place to have dinner. We have dinner occasionally. Most of the time, we uh, have lunch here because they have wonderful salads and pizzas and pastas. And um, the best part of this restaurant, in my opinion, is the fellow who owns it. And there he is on the, le on the right. His name is Simone. And that's the picture that I took with Simone in 2007. He was still in his mid-twenties at this time and he already owned this magnificent restaurant and we, you know, we got to know him and we tried to come back to visit him but for some reason we couldn't. But this latest time in 2014, I sent him an email and said that I would like to interview you for my show. He consented and the next show that we'll be doing will be a 20-minute interview that he graciously gave to us. So we'll be learning a little bit more about Simone, but we're going to have to wait for the next show. This is our favorite formal restaurant. Barrio Molo is an informal restaurant. This is a more formal restaurant, Vecchia Varena. And uh, when we want to celebrate an occasion, or we just want to have a relaxing, long dinner with some beautiful views, we come to this restaurant. And I'll tell you a little about it. There it is, right there. Uh, let me use the pointer again. This is the restaurant right here. It actually has up these plastic windows which block the breezes because it gets pretty chilly there because it's, you know, right on the lake. But that's what the restaurant looks like. And it is, you know, just a wonderful place. There's another view of it. As you approach it, there it is right over there on the uh, kind of on the right side as you approach the restaurant. And you can see the view you're going to get once you get there. This is a view from the actual restaurant. This is looking to the south, back towards the walkway, and back towards the Barrio Molo. And this is the view you get uh, of one of their sunsets, sitting at one of their tables, looking off to the west at Lake Como. This is the view from our favorite table. We always uh, go to this restaurant, make a reservation, and make sure that we sit at this table. And there is an example of sitting and having a couple of glasses of wine while we look at the menus which are on the table. And this is the view you get. Now, look at this view, and look at the view that we took during the last trip. And you'll notice a very, very big difference, which we pointed out to the person who was serving us. You see those flowers over there in the flower box? Well, people were complaining that it was blocking the view, so they lowered it. And this is the view you now get, which is obviously a nicer view. And there's, um, this time we weren't having wine. I, I, think, I think that's Laura's Prosecco, and I was having a limoncello. So we're about to be served um, dinner, and this is what it looks like as we're about, you know, we're sitting at this table enjoying a really wonderful dinner, and that's the appetizer that we had, which I honestly do not remember and forgot to ask Laura what that was. So <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but uh, that's one of the really, you know, and they really make... Uh, the food looked very, very appetizing. It's very, very delicious. And then you kind of just sit by your table and look at some of the sunsets. And I decided to throw in um, about 10 sunsets that Laura has taken um, over Lake Como 
over the five trips that we've been there. So the next several photos are going to focus on some of the sunsets on Lake Como. And I just chose my favorite, uh, I'm not sure how many there are really, probably about 10, but these are my favorites. This is actually a panoramic view of um, the evening time on Lake Como, which on the right side is the restaurant, and uh, you could see what that looks like. But look at that picture. This, of course, was taken by Laura from the um, shoreline at Varena, looking towards the west and south, and that's what it looks like. A golden, you know, the golden water of Lake Como, and look at that one. A really, really spectacular view of Lake Como at sunset with the ducks on the lake. There's a little boat over there right to the right of center. And that's quite an amazing shot right there. There's another view. That's actually a similar view, but looking slightly more to the south. So this is part of the charm of going to Varena is you get these extraordinary sunsets. I believe this is a little earlier in the evening, but look at that, look at that view. This is a, um, a sunset that was taken from the window of the hotel, the hotel room at the Villa Ciprese, looking at the town of Varena, um, right there in the, um, in the middle of the screen with the Alps behind it. And that's that same picture looking slightly more towards the north, but a really gorgeous sunset. And as we go along, the sun will be setting more and more over Lake Como. This is a beautiful view looking more towards the south. Look at this shot. I don't even know how Laura got this. With the kind of, you know, illuminated uh, overhanging tree with the sunset in the background. I'm not sure how this picture was taken, but wow, what a photo was this. And this is from the window of the hotel at the Villa Ciprese, looking towards the southwest. And as evening wears on and the sun is going down, this is what Lake Como looks like. Again from the Villa Ciprese. And the last traces of sun before it gets completely dark. And that was tonight's show, Verena on Lake Como. And the next show is going to be um, really, really special. The next two shows are going to focus on our very, very dear friend, uh, Simone. And also you will get to meet his uh, partner, Silvia. And um, they were really, really wonderful to us. And you will see, I won't even tell you the story. This next show is going to focus on the interview that we did with Simone right at the restaurant. I call it Divine Life on Lake Como because the name of his, um, um, uh, the B&B &B that he has created recently is called Divina Vita, which is, which is translated into Divine Life. And that's, the, that's going to be the title of the uh, next show, Divine Life on Lake Como, hanging out at the Barrio Molo with Simone. And that brings us to the end of tonight's show. Thank you for watching. And uh, you should really try to tune in to the next two shows. 
where we focus on the interview by Simone, and then the next show after that, I really have to explain because it was a, it really one of the most extraordinary evenings of my life, and I have a whole show just on that, and that will be the 100th show. So this was number 98, the next show will be number 99, and then the one after that will be the very special uh, 100th anniversary show. So thank you for watching. Uh, and buona notte e buona fortuna. Thank you.